guess you think, super sick. Is it Mr. Brent Pose? Is this the, is this the Brent? Mm -hmm. Real gentle. There we go. Let me have it. There you go. Okay. I'll show Tiffany how to. Tiffany, right here, Tiffany. The angry Adam just. Mm, right there. <laughs> trying to make me cry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, Ed. Not today. Lately, it's been like my right shoulder right here okay. in the front. Okay. If I'm doing any chest or shoulder exercises, that'll that'll start hurting a little there. bit. Yeah. And I know you told me a couple months ago you felt some lower back discomfort. Just mm, just yes. describe that. Just kind of achy, sore. How would you? Well, yeah, it was like a sharp pain uh, in my lower back, and uh, I couldn't really like I could hardly walk there for like a week week and a half. Okay. But that didn't that one didn't go down the leg. But you said before you've had some leg discomfort. Right. That was years ago, you said? Yeah. Okay. And then you do play softball. How often do you play baseball or baseball? Softball. softball? Yeah, just Sunday, like a little Sunday rec league. And you, and you know, you, you said you were rotating and you felt some, some pulling on the side. You're right. Okay. All right, relax your arms. They are relaxed, Ed. All right. All right. Left shoulder's a little high. Put your posture. There we go. Left hip is high. You know, do you remember if the, the pain was down the right leg or left leg? Do you remember which? Right leg. Yeah. Remember how I was right, saying yeah. earlier? <laughs> you're, when I feel your hips, your left hip is high. And when you raise your left hip, the holes, like I showed you earlier, when I lift this left hip, it's essentially you're tilting to the left, which opens up the holes that the nerves go through on the right side. So if there's a disc injury hitting the nerve, you know, your static position right now is left high. And then some chiropractor will, this gets really stupid real quick. Your left hip's high, so let's take your left hip and shove it back down. Mm -hmm. Then we run into the nerve again. All That's right. kind of stupid. Right. Then some other person says, let's take a heel lift and put it in your shoe. Mm -hmm. But then that puts the weight back on the right side, which then makes your hip, left hip come up even higher, which makes the right leg look even shorter. Is that, or the left, hip, right. left leg look even shorter, which then makes you have to put an even higher more heel lift. Does that make sense? The body will auto-level the hips when there's no reason for the misalignment to occur. How do you get rid of the hip misalignment? Most likely this part of your back is tighter than it's supposed to be, which is what we build up when we're weightlifting. So the traps, your lats, your quadrice lumborum, diaphragm, some large muscles all attach at T12 right here. Nobody weightlifts, <laughs> right? You lock your chest. Right, when you're bench pressing, you're not bench pressing. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Right? right, if you're squatting, you lock your chest, right? Mm -hmm. You have good form. So my point is that being a really good bench presser requires you to lock your chest really well to isolate your arms. You don't want to have any extraneous motion, right? right. If you, to be a, you want to isolate the arms that you're lifting weights, deltoids. So you're encouraging chest rigidity when you exercise, which is fine, but we have to then participate in keeping it loose also. We have to have a balance of power and flexibility. And I suspect because you're a very strong guy that we, you're on the power part of the spectrum and we just need to introduce some, some things to do to loosen your spine a little bit so we don't just have so much of your back tight and then a few areas doing all the motion and then we injure those areas. So the front part of your shoulder the, we call the AC joint, the acromial clavicular joint. You're kind of pointing right to it. So yeah, I suspect, right there. yeah, I suspect that that joint is loaded with pain fibers. When your shoulders forward, you're jamming that joint. It's a pretty easy fix, cleaning it out, getting the shoulder back, so it's not jammed all the time. Sometimes you'll have what we call the sternocostal joints here on the side of your sternum. They get jammed again because the pec muscle is actually bigger than the rhomboids. You're, if you're going to look at power. The front muscles here, technically, if they're, they're play tug of war, it, it maybe that makes sense. The pack pulls your shoulder forward, the rhomboid pulls it back, right? right. Who's going to win? The pec. Right. You understand? It's a much stronger muscle, typically, and so the rhomboid keeps on falling in the mud, right. and the pec keeps winning, and then that jams these joints. Um, I know. Your middle back. Get the oh, idea? Yeah, that's pretty flexible. <laughs> I'm not even here. Anywhere near that. Do you see my point? Yeah. So if, if, but watch, when I, when I, when I, if I was lifting weights right now, I'd have to lock that, right? right? I'd have to lock that to 
Otherwise, I, <laughs> otherwise, if I lifted a weight, my whole torso would round forward, right? You have to lock your chest. Mm -hmm. So I had a chiropractor as a father who, you know, not only wasn't I, you know, I, my dad probably would beat me up a little bit if I went to the gym, <laughs> you know, or lifting weights specifically. I, I swam in a swimming pool for years, and that's what chiro kids do. But right. it's not to say that lifting, weight, lifting weights is bad, but we have to, if you're going to be an athlete, you have to have a car mechanic. If you're going to be exercising six days a week, you're going to have to have somebody making sure that your whole spine is limber so that your spine ages evenly. Typically right now, five vertebrae are having all surgery in America. Um, just pure statistically, L5 is 75% of surgery. L4 is 24%, even though this model has a disc injury at L3. It's about 1%. The current medical and chiropractic explanation for why these two discs have all have all the surgery is age and weight, wear and tear is what causes the lower neck, C5, 6, and 7, L4, L5 to have all the surgery. My question is how old are the other discs? They're all the same age. So it's very silly to say that it's aging that causes disc wear. It's the teeth that you're chewing on, right? The ones that are doing all the mechanical work, like tread on a tire. If your tire's all on straight, you wear the tire out evenly. Let's be flat. There we go. Cross this arm under, over. Take one deep breath in for me. Head back for me. Let all the air out. Yeah, deep breath in. Head back. There we go. Deep breath in. Head back. It moved. Reluctant. That was nice. But they're moving. If this is injured, we shouldn't be adjusting it. We're trying to adjust the areas above and below to take stress off the injured area. If you have a cut on your skin, it's never a good idea to... So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay. Take a deep breath in. I'm gonna go real gentle. Just twist. There you go. There we go. I got you. Exhale. Yes. You have no range of motion here. Come on. All right. Okay, breathe for me. Exhale. Not gonna fall, I promise. Uh -huh. Oh, it's okay. Let's have for me. It's okay. There we go. There we go. Breathe. Exhale. There it is. There we go. A little bit. Breathe. Exhale. Let it go. Let the shoulder go. There we go. Good. Now face up for me. Trying to balance your spine by not adjusting what's loose and only adjusting what's stiff. Okay. Okay. Wow, just yeah. so much musculature over the bones. <laughs> wow. If I ever need a bodyguard, I think I got one <laughs> right here. Jeez. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Real gentle. Here we go. Let me have it. There you go. Okay. All right. Give a second. All right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me have your head. I got your head. There you go. There we go. Okay. All right. A little deeper in a second. It's just getting you loosened up a little bit. How long, how, how long has it been since your last adjustment? Oh, it's been a while, probably six or eight months. Okay. All right. As your back gets stiffer, you actually feel better <laughs> until you finally <laughs> sprain one of the few remaining parts of your back that is doing anything. And so this is why you, you know, people are like, well, I was doing fine until I, you know, hit a baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. You know, it's like, well. You probably were running on a skeleton crew, <laughs> had your team down to a, a pittance, and then you finally wore out one of the few remaining parts that were working. And so there's, I feel a lot of just, just guarding and reluct you know, reluctance. There should be a, just a, an ease with which these joints in your upper neck move. Joints are like bolts. They're, just, they're designed to rotate. They're designed to move. I'm not asking them to do anything outside what their capacity is. Um, but they're loaded with pain fibers, so our body you know, goes away from them. It's easy to avoid them. That's part of what I'm doing right now is I'm getting the weight back on the joint. Why do we want to do that? Because the joints all replace. The disc on the front doesn't replace, and so if you got all the weight off the joint, then it's on the disc, and that's what eventually leads to Peyton Manning surgery and Tiger Woods surgery and you know these 40-year-olds get back surgery because they can't avoid it, the problem any longer, and the, the cartilage is now all worn out. You did a really good job. I usually say this, 
I didn't really do a good job lifting weights. My muscles did. He did a good job. His <laughs> muscles got all big. <laughs> anyway, if, if you abuse a muscle, it gets bigger, right? Mm -hmm. You're lifting weights. Your body's telling you to stop, and you say, shut up. <laughs> right. right? And you keep lifting the weight. Um, I call that, we call that hypertrophy, but it's, it's essentially your, the muscle microscopically tears, and then it regenerates and grows larger. Your skin does the same thing. You get calluses on your skin. The skin thickens when you overstress it. Bones do the same thing. The joints do the same thing. So if you overwork a joint, the joint will grow. Does that make sense? In the yeah, same way that okay. a muscle grows. But they call a joint getting larger in America degenerative joint disease. Okay? <laughs> so if you call a b bone getting bigger a disease, to me you have to make a muscle getting bigger a disease. Right? right? They're, they're not diseases. They just are adaptations to stress. So when you're exercising at the gym, what are muscles attached to? Well, joints and bones, and that's how you, when you're moving your arm, you're moving the joints. So I want all the joints in your spine to be moving evenly so that they age evenly. What typically happens is somebody gets to 40 and part of their back looks 80, right? And part mm -hmm. of their back looks 20. So part of your back looks younger than you are and part of it's older. And that's what is termed disease, osteoarthritis, <laughs> arth meaning joint. Itis meaning inflammation, so osteo is bone, bone joint inflammation, right? That word doesn't sound that scary, but if I say osteoarthritis, mm -hmm. everybody gets all scared. <laughs> right. Well, can chiropractic help osteoarthritis? Yes, I can help bone joint inflammation. It's why are the bones and the joints inflamed? Because certain joints are doing extra, certain joints aren't doing anything. You don't get to choose where you bend. Um, it's a volunteer system, so we need to... Your upper neck is supposed to move first, your lower neck is supposed to move last, your middle back is supposed to move first, your lower back should move last. Wow, look at this thing. Look at, what, do you tear this? <laughs> you no, feel this? Do you feel this? Yeah, I feel it, yeah. What in the, I'm figuring it out. See how this, that doesn't exist over here. Feel, feel the difference? Right. It's a smooth, the right side of his neck is very smooth, no bands or cords. It was like a guitar string is on the left side of his neck. Has anybody ever told you this? No? Yeah. They did? Yeah. Okay. And what did they say? Just uh, that was an, another chiropractor I went to. He said my scalpula felt like a guitar string. <laughs> That's exact word. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 the, it's the erector so muscles. So that had happened in the gym from Pulling. Uh, doing barbell shrugs. Okay. You think you may have felt some tweaking here? Yeah, but I, haven't, I didn't know it was still like that. It, it was in serious pain for... Like a week and a half, but that was that was like a year and a half ago. Okay, I would imagine this. That's why I'm trying to ask these questions because I'm like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't know what caused this. <laughs> right. When I'm walking around a car and there's a giant dent in his bumper, and I'm like, okay, you ran into something here, but I don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so it was a while ago. Okay, I didn't think it was like a permanent thing. I think it just went away. No, it's still here. We, I, I think we can untangle it. It's healed in a knot, hmm. and if we can work on it. That's why the left side of your neck didn't move as well as the right, and now I know why. Mm. This is all, your head doesn't like tilting. There it is. Feel click there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he finally let it tilt left. <laughs> you see the, you finally let it, your head go left. You were like, nope, buddy. <laughs> I'm not tilting my head left. And then as he moved his head left, the bone then moved. I was like, jeez, this guy's so powerful. Little pipsqueak work on him. Here we go, come on. It actually went down quite a bit, actually relaxed quite a bit as that as your head tilted left, but yeah, there's still to me it's a it's a tear and then it healed real tight. Um what happened in the episode where you take me to the gym and just kill me at the gym. Okay. You would die. I think the most I could ever bench press was like two thirty five and I'm I'm a buck eighty. That's pretty good. Okay, all right, that was the, my wrists are killing me. <laughs> And I used to, I mean, I probably could do a little more. I always wanted to, I mean, maybe you could teach me. Um, I always wanted at least to be able to do like five reps. I thought it was always silly if you only could do one rep. Right. You know, I was like, I mean, maybe I could do one rep at 250, but I'm like, you know, I wanted to be able to at least do a couple reps at a weight. So I, I never went to the weight that was like the absolute <laughs> maximum. I mean, is, that, is that a good idea to do that though? Is it, do you want to? I don't do it anymore. Do, but guys do that. They try to, yeah, they just I mean, do one rep. The younger guys, they want to see how strong they are. Yeah. Right. I'm like, anyway. So how much? Here we go. Do you how much do you bench press, Colin? Oh, I have like 300 something. Yeah, I was like 365. Yeah. Three was 
<laughs> the last time that I tried to go heavy, but I don't try it anymore since my shoulder's been hurting. Mm. On his days off, he's doing like 250. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not have it, never had any soft tissue work like this, right? No, no. Nobody's ever combed you or anything? Okay. No. Just a way to untangle. It's like a, to me, it's like a hairbrush. Just a way to... Mm, feels weird. <laughs> Is this that thing yes, that sir. makes you red? Yep. Yeah. We'll do it in sitting in a position. I don't want to at least get it. It needs it. This left side of your neck is traumatized. Something's healed incorrectly. Like a, it's almost like a, the original tissue was made of gold and then it heals with copper. You know, and now mm -hmm. my job is to try to blend the copper and the gold. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't get to heal with gold anymore. Your mom gave it to you and that's kind of all you get. Mm -hmm. There's a little hint of it there, but there's... Yeah, and if I'm too nice to you, then Tiffany's going to get all mad at me. So <laughs> I have to, you know... Oh, so you beat him, you beat me up, and you're real nice to my hubby, and what's up with that? <laughs> well, because I'm more worried about him beating me up, okay? <laughs> Jeez, I'm going to make this guy mad at me. I'm mm sorry, -hmm. you adjust your kids too? Yeah, we, we work on them all the time. Yeah, it's that's their health care. I was adjusted since I was a baby. My kids, since they were hours old, all my kids came out asymmetrical. They preferred turning their head one way because in the womb you're actually rotated one way, and no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> like if you bought a brand new car and you had it on a level road and the car started pulling to the side immediately, went right zero miles on it, you take it back to the dealership and go, <laughs> Would you sell me? <laughs> Cars pull them to the side, and, they, and if they looked at you and said, "Oh, it's just normal," yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll have two fifties uh, pull to the side like that. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> that's what I'm being sold. That's the goods that I'm being sold. It's just normal that they're crooked, you know, or they'll grow out of it. It's like no, you have to work on them. I'll show you kind of a two birds one stone stretch, which your, which your wife's already doing, on your back, arching back, and then you actually put your arms above your head or to the side, okay. and you can. You know, kind of get your back in the right position and your shoulders. And there we go. But yeah, all this is going to get purple in a second. <laughs> all this has to stretch to allow. Is that your knuckles this or is that thing? This is my knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? I, know. I didn't know if you were using that scraper thing. Or? I can beat you in thumb more, I think, but that's yeah, about it, okay? <laughs> Everything else, I think you got me, but. I'm asking that all the time. What part of your body are you running against me? <laughs> <laughs> like, his elbow is pointy. <laughs> I was 13 years old. My dad said, like, get in here and start working on this. <laughs> I don't get tired anymore. So that the pain there is fixable? Everything in here is joint, so it's, everything's replaceable. That's what I mean, we don't have to cry about it. We just gotta get, but, uh, it replaces every six weeks, the joint. Oh, so you mean like my body replaces correct. it? Correct. What are you we're saying replaceable? Like I'm like, I thought you meant like they'll go in there, open Well, your it skin, up. like your skin regenerates every 10 days. Okay. You get a whole new, if you cut your skin, new skin is made from the bottom, the old skin skull falls off on the top. The word is not, we use the word healing, but it's an incorrect word. The best word is replacement. Right. New skin's made, the old stuff falls off. The damaged skin doesn't heal itself. It doesn't reconstitute itself. Right. It leaves. Your muscles are on a four to six week. Your ligaments are on a six to eight week. Your joints, every about six weeks, you understand they replace. The, the fluid in there is, is like an oil in a car. It's, it's flushed out. Mm -hmm. So if it's inflammatory, you've damaged something, it's bruised, we don't have to... It's not the end of the world because it's replaceable. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's not replaceable is on the, the cartilage where the humerus contacts the glenoid fossa. Mm -hmm. That cartilage is not replaceable. That's why you have labral tears, people that damage or jam their shoulder. That cartilage isn't replaceable. But the tendons, the muscles, the fluid in the joint, that makes sense. A lot of the tissue in there is replaceable. Yeah, this is a jammed AC joint. Just it's because you're, you're exercising and then you're leaving your shoulder forward, right? You understand? You're the, it's like you're, wa you're washing your car and then you're driving it, but you're leaving it parked underneath the tree. <laughs> you're saying, we got to get it in the garage. we got to get this, 
the position that the shoulder's in in a better place where it doesn't get, it doesn't stay inflamed. Right. Okay. Even though I just worked on here, your left goes much farther. <laughs> Oh, uh, mobility on that. Correct. You notice that? Yeah. I mean, I just worked, and, and I just worked on your right. <laughs> I haven't even touched your left yet, and your left cold is going farther than your right warmed up. Mm -hmm. So it's your your you have more forward rotation of your right shoulder than your left. So we need to work on all these angles: noon, you know, eleven and one, ten and two. Does that make sense? Nine and three, like mm -hmm. a clock. You're gonna work all these angles, and and bring your shoulders back. At the end of the day, just letting your chest open up. And like I said, we're gonna do two birds, one stone. We're gonna show you how to how to get your back in at the same time. Yeah, right there, Colin. You see that there it is. Right there. Right there. That's where it comes out. The mark is never normal. It only draws out where there's something internally that's been injured. Okay. I can't make a mark in an area where there's nothing inside. It's like a carpet cleaner or vacuuming. The vacuum doesn't create any dirt. It just pulls out what's mm -hmm. in the tissue. This right side, very little. I don't think I can make a mark on the right side of the neck. Like I said, this is, this is just pink. There's not much happening over here. And then, because you have this band and tear. Let your head look up for me a second. Look up. Keep looking up if you can. He's got some folding up here, it's good. So he's not just bending at the bottom, but kind of the first crease, let your head go straight forward. And then, look straight, and then slowly let your head go back. Slowly, slowly. And it starts to, both, both areas start to crease. It's good, it means he's not just bending just in the lower neck, but this is your main crease down here. You see that column, right? So right below the tear is right here. And then that's, so this is locked right there, and then he bends. So what we find is that this part of your spine in the lower is aging at a faster rate because there's an injury in the middle upper part. There we go. That's his belt, <laughs> Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Hewn from a solid piece of granite. Uh -huh. I, I can't tell if the scraper feels good or bad. <laughs> it's like a weird, it's a weird sensation. Okay. Is it like similar to the cupping thing? Same principle of drawing out what's inside that's trapped. So it's another way to stimulate blood flow, create an event, mm -hmm. increase circulation. So same category. All right. Let me feel this for a second. Feel the difference? This left side? Look yeah. at that. I mean, look at that. Wow. That is like the definition of tightness. <laughs> feel the difference? Compare this right here, right? Can you feel the softness over here? Yeah. Right? This is relatively soft. I'm, I'm not happy with this either, but <laughs> this is just a whole level of... Now, which side was it when you were rotating in, in softball? Which side was pulling? It's my my right, right side that right hurts, side. yeah. But you see how this is not moving? And then you're spraining this. Right. But the cause, you don't, you don't bend over here. <laughs> and this is happening. This tightness here it has to do with the left hip being high. Right. right. So your body had right sciatica, your left hip went high, that made your left middle back tight. Now when you play softball, you're spraining the rib heads and right. the muscles over here. It's just dominoes. It, but the, we get to the, course, the source of the problem is there isn't much curve in your lower back. We have to restore the curve, get your middle back bending again, especially here on the left, restore the arch. The left hip will go down. <laughs> it won't need to be high anymore. You'll have an even mobility when you swing a baseball bat, whereby it's not actually possible to hurt yourself anymore. Right. You know, I have golfers that come in here, and I'm hitting the ball 30 yards farther, and I don't hurt myself anymore. Hmm. <laughs> because their whole spine is working as a team. I'm going to kick your butt in yoga, okay? You're going <laughs> to kick, kick my butt in the gym. It's okay. Right. <laughs> I go to yoga, and people go, wow, you're so flexible. <laughs> I was a Cairo kid, and so I, what's been valued for me has been range of motion. Your problem is right here. I'll show Tiffany how to, Tiffany, right here, Tiffany. Angry Adam, just mm, right there. <laughs> it's part of your therapy, honey. <laughs> this side is tight, but not nearly as tight as the left. But don't, well, so you're happy with the right? No, I'm not happy with this either. <laughs>
both are way tighter than they're supposed to be, but Here's, here's, here's the pole. This is where you're pulling. Right around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is what we call quadratus lumborum attachment. So when you're rotating, you're, you're yanking on this attachment right here. I don't cry about it. It's all replaceable. It's all like skin. You know, it's, it's, um, it can heal, but you want to close the wound. You want to compress it, and we can get this feeling better real quick. The more expensive stuff is the, the pain going down the leg. Does that make sense? The sciatica is right. the, the things that are tougher. I'm never going too hard. Let me know, okay, bud? I'm going too... No, you're not, good. You okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. What sports did you play in high school? Uh, just baseball. Just baseball. Okay, all baseball. Okay. okay. Did you pitch at all or no? Yeah, that's what I did. Uh huh. Okay. It's a mess right here. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm trying to distract him with baseball talk here. Okay. Uh -huh. It's because it's a mess. Cry. Mm. <laughs> Not today, Ed. Not today. <laughs> it's two ways through life, laughing or crying. So <laughs> I've chose the laughing path. What does Brandon do with you like this? Like, super sick. Is it Mr. Brent Post? Is this the Brent? That's why your left hip didn't want to move earlier. This was all bound up on your left. Sorry, I'm sorry, right. Oh, your right hip didn't want to move earlier. This is all bound up on your right lower side here. Yeah. Didn't want to give. Okay. Oh, I think yeah. I like the guasha better now. <laughs> Actually, I really do. <laughs> that elbow was something else. I don't know. We should be ensure those as deadly weapons. All right. mm -hmm. Here it is. This is what he pulled rotating in baseball. Softball, but yeah, this is attachment to the muscles, quadratus and borum attaches up here. It gets stretched when you rotate. No, Ed, not my <laughs> rotator cuff.
all of this has to get out of the way in order to bring your shoulders back. All of this <clears throat> prevents your scapula from being able to retract. So getting all of this calmed down, not so sore and bruised and tight and pushed in so that there's room for your shoulder blade to actually draw back into this area. Okay. Yep, so it's all prep work, it's all prep for stretching. Up a yeah, bit. yeah, no, much different. Much softer. You need oxygen to contract the muscle. You also need oxygen to relax the muscle. So when area gets so tight, it just kind of chokes itself and creates a positive feedback loop where it can't undo itself until somebody you know, elbows it and <laughs> unlocks it. Right. Yeah. My dishes have never cleaned themselves in the sink. <laughs> you know, and you have to like put work in to undo it. Even when I press here, you might actually feel it in the leg. I wouldn't be surprised if you... It's not a... Like right in there, you might feel it. That's where the nerves that begin that go down to the leg. They originate right here. working on somebody in extension, this is probably not going to be as funny. You're going to try to whack me even more. <laughs> My point is that I actually bend you back a little bit and then work on you if you can handle it. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Work on you while we're bending back. There you go. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the curve that your lower back should be in. This is just as tight as it can be. We have to first make it supple so that we can reshape it. It's too painful, you can lay back flat, but just try to hang on here for a little bit. All right. Very good. Just when you're on your side. Oh, okay. This is what didn't want to really move in this side, so I made a note earlier that we're going to come back and get revenge. Uh -huh, so is, uh, I have a mobile SI joint, sacroiliac. That's a nice tightness to have there, gee whiz. your forehead to form. I'm just going to stretch for a second. We're just going to stretch. Breathe in for me. Exhale. Good. Breathe in. Exhale. Okay. Breathe in. Exhale. Good. Okay. All right. Put your arms down for me. Good. Well, this scares the crap out of you. I'm not going to reach. I promise. All right. I'm going to do it. Right. No. I'm probably going to fall apart here. Breathe for me. I don't think I was letting them do it. It's okay. Honestly. Okay. Come on, let it go. Come on. That was what I was trying to get earlier. <laughs> that 
bone. Finally came to the party, what, an hour into our visit? <laughs> he, one of those late arrivals. If this area is supple, it isn't possible to overstress that. It took a, you know, an hour <laughs> to get this part of your back. And most of, even, the, even the sound when it moved, it was like clunk. <laughs> mm -hmm. That joint hasn't moved in a while. As a chiropractor, the loosest joints are the easiest ones to move. The stiffest ones take the most you know, work to restore. But they're the very areas that need the most attention. That sprain. Oh, okay. That's where you're when you're rotating. That's the rib comes rolling there, and that, that mark there is what's not normal. And he's got some blood in there, and then that that, was, that last click was right next to it. So it's oh, not okay. when this muscle gets injured, it tightens down. So it's not. It's also the reason why your middle back is protected because of an injury like that. Again, that man makes your lower back do extra because this is all right. bound up, and so it's just balance. I saw a video of you picking up some girl's legs like that. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh -huh. I started sweating right away. <laughs> it's okay. I give everybody what they can handle. Do you understand? I'm not. I'm not here to. You did it. I mean, you. You did move it. <laughs> I'm not here to break people's will. I'm here to show you how much you've lost. You know, there's no reason your legs can't go up that high. Do you understand? Unless you had a rod in your back. Right. You, do you understand? Unless, unless you tell me, Ed, no, I have a plate in my back. You can't expect that from me. No. You have the same joint anatomy that she had. Right. Right. But what you don't have is each, right, so you get three degrees or five degrees from that guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then this guy's got to give his, right, every piece, every link in the chain has to work as a team. You have this guy working at 10%, this guy's working at 20%, this guy's working at, now after today, we boosted the range of motion by, you know, 20% each, per, each vertebrae got 20% more. It's now they're working at 50%. Are you happy yet? No, because <laughs> I want them all at full range of motion. But it's better than where we started, where you had less than what was supposed to be. But that's that's where the whole team, right? The whole team I has can't to imagine ever being able to do that. Well, because you haven't done it. Right. I can't imagine bench pressing 350 pounds. Right. right? Now it's a process. You don't just start at 200 pounds and start all of a sudden benching 350. You have to go up the ranks. Right? That's range of motion. I'm showing you the potential. You're you don't have. To, I asked you earlier. Any surgeries? Any, no. Everything's in there. It's God gave me, so there's no reason we can't strive towards that. Now, yeah, it's a couple of year process to, you know, go to, from 200 pound benching to 350. I'm sure. It doesn't, I mean, how long did that take for me? Go on. Right. Never, never. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not, Ed. I don't think it's in your cards, Ed. <laughs> like if I went to the gym with you six days a week for, I'm teasing. I'm, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to give you that, Ed. All bound up. Wow. There we got moved. Okay. How about in here? Any everything okay in here? That one's that that knee's okay. This knee's a little messed up. That's on the uh, in here. Outside, like right that whatever MCL or whatever. I don't know what okay. Did you, so they call it LCL? You tore the LCL here? No, I don't know. They didn't say anything. I was just, I looked okay. at the knee and that. So you have MCL on the inside, LCL here, and then the inside you have the ACL and the PCL, or the internal. So anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate, medial collateral, lateral collateral, the four ligaments that hold your knee together. Right. So, you got, but I you have pain here? Yeah, like I feel a little fluid here, and then uh, like if I'm spotting, uh, going down, not pushing up, but uh -huh. going down. Like trying to hold the resistance. You but know. how about here? Nothing here on the front inside. No, nothing there. Okay. How long ago did you first feel that? Uh, it's probably been a year, uh -huh. year and a half. Maybe. Okay. Let's check it. You're pointing to not a very commonly operated on area, so um, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> so where I was poking you, you understand, is where everybody gets surgery. Right. This is the uh, the, the medial meniscus, mm -hmm. which is typically where most of the knee cartilage wears out here on the inside. You're pointing to the lateral meniscus, which, you know, maybe base softball, some sort of twisting. Maybe you, you know, rotated and, and busted that. It's, but it's definitely less typical. Okay. Um, good. But we, we want to. So the tighter the quad gets, the more the knee is in a vice grip. So we want to check the, 
your quad's range of motion here. If the quad is very tight, it holds this in a, a, a vise. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't let the meniscus breathe. The meniscus is made of 70, 80% water. So it dehydrates, become like a piece of bacon. It gets hard and crispy. And then the surgeons want to have you have a consultation. And yeah. <laughs> well, time for a knee replacement. You know, so we want to keep the meniscus hydrated by learning how to stretch the quad, how to open up the knee. It's what I was doing earlier. I'm taking your knee, I'm opening up the knee. There we go. You understand? I'm trying to open up the mm -hmm. cartilage in there. Try to come down, put your butt to your heel. Yeah, we are about, I don't know, that far? Get the idea? Is that bad or good? Not good. Not good. <laughs> a little bit closer. Get a lot closer on this side. Am I? Okay. Yeah. And the range of motion is what keeps the meniscus hydrated. So this is what is evidence of accelerated aging of the meniscus. No one cares until your meniscus is gone. And well, shouldn't I have been doing something in my 30s to help prevent this? Yes. <laughs> I usually do a set of 10 times. So you hold on to something and you just you know, one. That makes sense. And you're right. working on stretching. And then they can, you know, in yoga they do it as, I'm not going to ask you to do this, but the point in yoga they do it like this. You know, then they come back onto their, no, you understand this is how they do it. You know, what's the purpose of this? They're trying to stretch the quad. This shouldn't be the end of the world. All right, All right let me see here. Tilt your head to the right for me a little bit. Tilt right, tilt right. Oh, what was that? <laughs> there can be adhesions behind the ear, little pieces of glue that get trapped. This is where your wife was like, that's a different type of book. There's, there's glue that, because there's range of motion, we never really take in our ear, the drain lines that drain your face go down your neck. And so clearing this area, making sure it's all flowing properly helps with sinus, you know, drainage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh, we're going again? It's on the top yeah. part, top part. Yeah. Tilt right to the right, tilt right. Go ahead and tilt, tilt. All right, we're good. All right, go ahead and tilt left. Mm. There we go. Tilt. Mm. It's, like a, it's like a ripish crack. This is still attached. All right. All right, fair enough. So we start. This is the two birds with one stone I was talking about. See how my arms are up? Mm. And you're just going to have your arm. You can work these different angles. You start, you know, one minute, and you're working your way. I'm not lifting my bottom up, you're kind of dragging the bottom. Okay. And you want to be able to put this right in that middle back area where that pole was eventually. The knees can go side to side. Is your butt on the ground or butt on the ground? Butt's on the ground. Because okay. okay. I'm bending over it. Right. Your back's not supposed to be straight and play teeter totter. Right. Right? We want to, this would not be, <laughs> or, or like this. Right. You're not supposed to be, you're supposed to be bending over the device. You know, it's a, it's a stretch, it's a, it's a new activity. That, the first time you go like the gym, I've been in the gym, but you don't go every single type of exercise, right? You, right? you maybe do arms and deltoids and then next time you do your back and lats or, mm -hmm. right? So as you begin showing your back the position that it should be in, take it segment by segment. Today I'm going to show you the whole thing so you have an idea, but so you're, you're going to push with your feet and roll one inch down and then say, here, breathe, breathe. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's too much, I can put another block, block behind you, but I want... Yeah, let's do another block. Okay. All right. Head back. Head back. Here we go. Okay, I mean that's a little e too easy, but all right. Well, it's just, it's just, I don't mind making it. I want it. I would rather make it easy and go for time. You understand? Okay. That's okay. Make it easy. Make it something where you go and it's I feel like I'm wasting my time on it. Then we can. <laughs> I got plenty of ways to make it harder. Right. The candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long, right? Doesn't make it a disease candle. Mm -hmm. If you make your lower back do triple the work, it's going to last a third of the amount of life expectancy. You know, nobody wants. I think. Well, I don't want surgery. Nobody wakes up. Yeah, I've been waiting my whole life. My dad had surgery, my mom had surgery. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> today's my day. You know, nobody looks forward to surgery. Nobody's like, today's my, I'm, you know, nobody wants surgery, my point is. But if we don't do something about it, it's inevitable. When you, when you come up after that, sometimes you'll feel like you're bending back because, right. you know, it's like you just held yourself back here and now being in neutral feels easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels good. Mm -hmm. All right, my friend. Thanks, Thanks for dropping in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep.